and we already have that component created so this component is going to uh, house our text message each of the text message and it's gonna accept some couple of things so it's gonna accept the text message the sender email and also the receiver email so if the current user actually sending the message is the sender then we have to give it a special type of background as well as the receiver a special type of background so it's gonna accept these three things and we can come over to the inbox chart and we can change this and what i will simply do let me just call it text message let's say text message component we can just quickly come over here and import that import text message from chats components so we have that imported and right now i can uh, pass the text message we have the sender email as well as the receiver email so the sender email is the clicked user email but i'm just going to name that as a sender email so we can say the sender email so if you can observe we are not using er there we are just using an r is equal to the local storage dot get item then we can get the clicked user email so we already have that and i uh, think to make sure everything is correct please uh let's quick fix that so this is sender email not so sorry guys for that little delay let's just make sure everything is perfectly done so let's paste this save it come over here as well and save it and inside the component itself i just want to construct uh, a class called from sender so we have to check if the sender email is equal to the receiver email so if it is true we want to return the class of from sender or else we don't want to return any class but in a case it's false uh, we don't want to return the from sender except if it is um, true so right here i can just uh, pass that class name so we have a class name of so we have chat message class and uh, from here we can pass it from sender and inside these two divs we can now pass the text message and quickly let's come over to the inbox chat as well so right here instead of us to use uh, justify content uh, flex end i want a situation whereby if i'm the sender or the receiver is the sender the messages are either placed left or right so let's just fix that as well so we have the sender email is equal to the receiver email so in that case we have to use flex start or else we have to use flex end so this case usually false until we make sure we have a true value which is going to check for both conditions and let's kind of quickly refresh and click on a user chart so let's see are we still not we are still not yet separated and uh, so i didn't really know that my app uh terminated so i just have to restart that quickly and right now you can see it's showing perfectly so if the sender or the click user email is the sender we get that and i think um the name in here is kind of pretty cool but let's just change it to click user email so that we can stick to one name in uh, we also have click user email so just grab that quickly save and come over here as well change all the sender email to to this click user email click user email as well and uh, let's kind of refresh and everything is still going to work perfectly we do not have any single error so i'm gonna click on a user 2 and uh, it says uh, sender email so i think we didn't actually change that somewhere and i i guess it's coming from 
here yeah so let's refresh one more time and this time around we are not supposed to get any single error so let's go ahead and click on these charts and you can see it showed perfectly so we have a message and our user 4 and user 3 do have a message so i kind of terminated my tabs when i was trying to figure out what happened not realizing that my app actually got stopped so you can see it's working perfectly and if we can uh, take for example go over to instagram charts oh sorry for that let me open a fresh new tab and go over to um uh, where is it okay let's say we go over to the graphql playground and i'm gonna send a message so bring in the mutation let's clear this side the mutation we put this so let's say uh, user 4 it's sending a message to user 1 uh, let's say message to user 1 so let's send that and that's gonna send and inside here if we click on user 4 and user 1 and you can see the message immediately appears so this shows us that everything is working perfectly and we have to work on the inbox input i'm going to come over to the inbox chat and on comment uh, this line of code where is it uh, i think that's on the right so let me just close this component for now and the user and we can uncomment this line of code over here so that's for the inbox input and we can come over here so you can see we have two uh, props that we pass the set text message which is probably coming from our our state value here so we do have set text message and we've not yet added that so we can just quickly add that so we need the dispatch we can use a state So we have an empty state value there. So we have here as test set text message and also a text message. And one more thing we have here is uh, to use a mutator for the send message. We are going to create that mutator, but not yet. Let's go ahead and finish for the unsubmit and also for the set text message. So I'm going to create an unsubmit function here. So let's call it on submit. It's going to have be a function and it's going to accept. Uh, okay, for now, let not, let's not pass anything, but let's just leave here. So it's just a function. We are not passing any prop to it. There is no prop here passing because we are just pass, passing it directly here. So right here, we're going to have a div with a class name of inbox input. And then right here we have a form and this form is going to have some other things but we are going to add that shortly so inside this form we are going to have an input which is going to have a placeholder of message so let's say let's make it a little bit capital then inside here we're going to have an unchange so an unchange event. So for this unchange, we're gonna use the set message to actually set the value of the event. So let's use set text message e dot value e dot target dot value, and then we can add a default value. So we have a default value of just an empty prop. So right here, I'm gonna create an unsubmit. Uh, function as well is gonna have a callback then right for for this one I'm gonna map this to submit so this is gonna accept an event and it's gonna take e dot prevent default and beneath that we can call our on submit function so why I did this is because I want to use a ref called we're gonna use a ref called uh, form ref. So let me clear this and change this to form ref. So what this form ref is gonna do is, whenever we hit on submit, we just wanna clear any value in the input or in the input box here. So we are gonna reference 
Uh, first of all, we can add a on submit. And then right here, we're going to have a ref, which we're going to call form ref. And let's save that and uh, quickly come over to application and refresh. So right now I got refreshed. You can see we now have the message box. So let's say I type hello. And when I hit enter, we ought to actually refresh that. It ought to reset. And uh, okay, that's because we, we are not yet done. So we can use formref.current.reset. So this should definitely reset the input so when i click on this user once more and uh, let's say i say hi user 2 so you can see when i send automatically it got reset so right now we can use the send message mutator and that's probably going to be coming from our in, uh, from our right component as well so right here i kind of figure out uh, we have a little problem here so let me just change this to set txt message while i'm going to create one more function here called uh, above here called set text message so this is going to take in the message that we did set and right here we can use the set txt so we have txt message and then we can set the message So let me kind of console log out that TX message to make sure we have it. So if I type hello, and you can see we're actually getting that uh, message. So right here in the on submit, whenever we click on submit, we have to check if uh, there is a text message. If not, we just want to stop. So we have to check if the text message is empty. We just have to return. Also, we have to check if we have the sender, which is the click user email. Check if sender is active. So the way we can do that is also to check if the click user email exists. If not, we also have to return. And lastly, we have to check if we do have this user in order to avoid any error. So in case we do have this user, then we can now use the set uh, message mutator. And whenever we are now done, we can just reset uh, the text message. So we have to just set txt message back to empty value. So right here, I want to check if we have a user, then we can use our message mutator. Then let's go ahead and create a send message mutator. And at the top here, I can say send uh, message mutator. So let's just quickly export a cons of message mutation and let's call it GQL. And uh, we have mutation, and what we are going to be sending is a text message. So which is the type of string? So let me just break this down. I don't want that clouded there. Then we have the sender email, which is as well as string. We also have the um, the receiver email, which is as well as string, and it's mandatory we do have it. So these are the three things we need. Then inside here. We are not going to bring in the send message mutator. So we have the send message. And first, we have the text message, which is the text message. The sender email, which is the sender email, the receiver email as well. And now uh, we have a sub selection of text message. So this is just the data we are going to return. I'm going to scroll down again and come inside these components. And right here we have this uh, to make sure if we have a user. Then after that, I'm going to send a message. So sending the message means that we have to grab it from the mutation. So I, I still forgot to do that, which is going to use mutation. So we have mutation of uh, send of message mutation. And then we can grab the, grab the send message function. So we have send message. And then we have the send message data. 
so scroll a little bit down once more and inside here we're gonna add the objects and then inside the objects we have the variables and then which is gonna have some cool objects there then we have the id um actually if we do it this way which means we have to repeat it twice so what i can do here is to let's say compose the message so i'm going to call this composed compose message because we also have to dispatch this to the store and it won't make sense if we repeat it twice so we have the id so let's just generate id a random id with date dot now then we also have the receiver email, which is the clicked user email. We have the sender email, which is this user.email. And lastly, we have the sent. Okay, not lastly, we have the sent at, which is the time, as well as dates.now. And then we have the text message, uh, which is just the text message that we are getting from there. So right here, I can just spread that over here or I can just add it directly to here so we can just say compose message so format this properly and once we are done we also have to dispatch that to store so let's say dispatch to store so I'm going to dispatch this current message with a type of store chat message so this is store chat message, not store chat messages. So let's just go ahead and import that. And his enter is going to import that for us. And then we have a payload of composed message. So I usually put this uh, semicolon. So let's refresh and see the effect of what we have done. And we are actually getting a message it said message mutation has already been declared so i think i did declare this before and uh it seems like we, are we repeating it twice okay guys we already have it declared uh, i think i i kind of forgot and so let me just comment this out i'll just go ahead and clear it because it's also the same thing so right now let's refresh again and we're gonna click on a user so let's say i'm gonna send a message here hello user 2 and it said clicked user email is not defined which is very very simple for us to fix so we scroll a little bit down to here okay okay guys uh we just have to use click user email one so instead of us to create a new a new click user email so let's just add one there because we already have one created so it's gonna use that and let's give this a one more time refresh and I'm gonna send a message hello user 2 so you can see immediately I send a message we have uh, uh, we have it dispatched to our store and it's actually showing on our chat so as you can see I'm typing and it's showing there so we have uh, cannot query send message on type mutation do you mean send message so which means probably from the message mutation from the graph keyword here message mutation um, i think i'm using send okay we have send message here and then in the graph keyword we should have a mistake here so we have a mistake here so let's clear our console and say hello and that solves it uh do you mean same message we actually did fix that so what the what was the problem okay i didn't save that actually i didn't save it so let's try again hi okay this time around it got stored and the user can now send a message uh to user two from the browser so when i click on user 4 i can type a message directly here say hello user 4 and hit enter and it's going to send to user 4 and also it's going to show on our own chat screen and quickly if we check inside our message mutator you can see right here we have the send message and you can see the messages that we constructed so one thing you can do guys is to make sure that you can grab the sender email from the 
the, pers the user that is sending, you can grab it from the data database and get the current ID of that user and then always update the relationship of that ID. So that's kind of really cool. But right here, whenever we uh, send a message, we actually do emit an event. Um, okay, right here, we also emit an event. Let's go ahead and do that. So the way we're going to do that is to duplicate our commander. I'm going to create one more event using the PHP make event. So we have PHP artisan make event, and we're going to call this event send message. So this is going to emit the message to the second user. So this is emit event, not event. So I guess you are seeing this clearly. So I guess you are seeing it clearly. So let me just hit enter and it's going to create one more event in our event folder. And right away, you can see that event over there, send message. And this send message is going to accept the message that we just constructed because it's going to emit it back to the receiver. So right here, I'm going to call that uh, function or class. And we're going to say new send message. So I'm going to pass in the message to be stored. And uh, we, we are going to have something similar to what we did earlier on load P2P chat, something like uh, dispatch info. So this is the information that we are going to dispatch and we're going to grab that and assign it to that dispatch info. So let's grab this data and then we can say this dispatch info is equal to the data. So everything is correct. So once we get the data and uh, we want to dispatch, we want to dispatch to a specific email address. So because we don't want to uh, emit to all the users, we just want to emit to that user that is about to receive it. So that's one cool thing I like about Pusher. I'm going to call this receiver and uh, I'm going to come here and append the from the dispatch info. From this part before, I want to get the receiver email. And lastly, I don't want to, I don't want this to be a private channel. I want this to be a public channel. So just go ahead and fix that. And now we have a public function broadcast. So we have broadcast with. So these are the information that we are going to broadcast with, which is the data. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna return the data, which is the dispatch info. So we dispatch this to a a common user or a single user using the email address. Then right away we just dispatch all this information to that user. So let's say for example, uh, we have to find a way to listen to that. And the way we can do that is actually we don't need send message data, but uh, you can just put an underscore here in order to make your code more shorter. So that looks good. So let's say uh, get emitted message. So right here we have a const of, uh, sorry, I have to use the effects because we can't just allow that to be there before we have a lot of memory leaks. So whenever our component loads, um, I want to grab the email from this current user. And then finally, I want to listen to that emitted event. So we have channel and name of the channel is, if you can recall, we did use receiver, um, receiver email. Yeah, I think we use so right here we have yeah receiver and the email address of that uh, user. So in this scenario, the person sending is the user that we clicked and the current user is the receiver. Then we can listen to send message. So we can listen to our events, which is the send message. And then right here, we can have access to the data. So let's just use an event there or anything you can just call it data I think that's preferable to use so let me just go ahead and console.log this and then we can test it out on a double browser 
So I open my Chrome over here. You can see all the message that user one is sending. It's on the left. Why the message user two is sending is on the right. So I'm going to say hi user one and I'm going to send that. And if it's working perfectly, uh, okay, I've not yet refreshed uh, this browser as well. So let me go ahead and do that. So after the refresh, I can say hi user two and send. And uh, right in our console, we should get a response. Uh, we didn't get anything yet. So uh, let me say hi user one again. I said user two mistakenly. We actually are not getting anything, but let's go ahead and fix that. So after checking some things, guys, I still forgot that I have not implemented the uh, they should uh, broadcast. So this should implement should broadcast. And I made a couple of changes while trying to figure it out. So I'm going to add this back, which is to concave this. Uh, for now, let me just, okay, let's just uh, try to uh, check this out. So I'm going to send hi to user two. So you can see right here in the console of our Firefox, we're actually getting that. So each user, whenever we click on a user, despite us emitting a message from user one so let's say from user one you can see even the message returns to user one which we don't actually want so we want a case whereby we want to emit to a single user i don't want to emit to all the users that way so we can still use back this dispatch info and then we have the receiver email and right back in our component, let's fix that. So we have the, which is going to take the email as well. And here, you can change this to data. So we are done with that. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that the data.receiver email, it's equals to the, uh, the, send this user email so in this case if another user is sending uh, a message we assume that this current user is the receiver so we have to make sure it's exactly the user that is going to receive it or else we don't want to dispatch the message to any of the other users so i'm going to dispatch this to the store so we can store chat message uh, with a payload of so the payload are many, we have, we just have to use the spread operator and spread this, and then we can just add a random ID with the date dot now. So this solves it. So this time around, let me go ahead and refresh and check them out on both browser. So I still forgot to change this to data, not an E. So I'm gonna refresh both once more. So let's say hi user two. How is your day going? I'm going to send that. And if everything works fine, user two should actually uh, receive that message. Um, we didn't actually do a hard refresh here. So let me just do a hard refresh on, on both because this sometimes can be a little bit frustrating. So let me send a message from user two. I can say, hi, user one. How is your day? And I'm going to send that and definitely user one is supposed to get that, but we are getting something like data.now is not a function. Uh, this is dates.now. Oh my God. I still made a mistake. And I can now say, hi, user one. How is your day going? I can send that. And in our user one, you can see automatically we get a message in our store. I can say I'm good. How about you? I can send it. And when we click on our Firefox, you see we get that message instantly displayed on our chat. So a user can chat uh, with many users right now. So whenever we send that, this user automatically gets that message. So it doesn't take time, just a little bit of milliseconds, then they get it. And uh, I think we are coming to the end of the tutorial. And uh, let's go ahead and test out for other users. So let's say right here, I clicked on user three. You can see I don't have a conversation with user three from user one. So I can just say hi, user three. And when I send that, it doesn't 
it doesn't show on user 2 chat and even if i click on user 3 from user 2 you see that chat doesn't show because they don't have a conversation so the little error we i think we are experiencing here is for the fact that even while we have a clicked user in our local storage we ought not to be seeing that spinning icon so we ought not to be seeing this we have to see the dummy screen so one way we can handle this problem it's very simple i think whenever we refresh our application and uh, actually we do have a click user email stored in our state in our local storage so what we can do is to clear it in order to have a free local storage so let's go over to our inbox our user is user not our inbox so right here while we are storing uh, other users i just want to say local host local storage dot remove item dot uh, we have to remove that click user email so let's refresh so you can see even if we click on a user right now and let's say two users are able to chat and even if we go back and give it a refresh definitely it's still going to show us the dummy uh the dummy screen or the dummy component before it shows out any other thing so you can see automatically we get this uh empty screen or dummy screen before we proceed to click on a user to chat so guys we've actually come to the end of this tutorial please do make sure you hit that like button i know i didn't emphasize it much while the videos we are going on because it's kind of really long since i made a video tutorial but please do smash that like button and also smash that invite button smash that subscribe button and share this video to a whole lot of people that are willing to learn how to build a laravel instagram graphql chat web socket application so thank you once more and see you on the next video bye bye